Hi everyone, in this part you are going to work. So the first goal of this lab is to introduce you to the Visual Studio project so you are able to understand how to do all the labs in the future. But most importantly, you are going to learn about the Kernel Transaction Manager APIs, how to call them from UserLearned and how to debug them in Kernel. There will be three labs. The first one is going to be about creating a, a resource manager, very simple one, just to get started. The second lab is about creating a transaction and that has one enlistment and making sure you can commit that transaction. And the third lab is about creating a transaction with multiple enlistments and checking the states for these enlistments until they are committed. So the full transaction is committed. Okay, let's get started. You need to do it in the right folder and then run the build.bat command in order to generate the new Visual Studio project files. So we are going to use Visual Studio to load our project. If you extracted the files already, they should be in a folder in something like Tools, Labs, Visual Studio Labs, corresponding to the Visual Studio Labs.zip being extracted. And inside you should have a build folder if you already ran the build.bat script. Inside that folder, you'll see a solution file, so you can start Visual Studio from that. So you will notice under the Visual Studio project, you have a part zero hierarchy with the Hello World lab, but you don't see any part one at the moment. So basically, you're going to have to go into the tools folder where you actually extracted the labs, and you should see a Visual Studio Labs folder along the Visual Studio Labs.zip file that you have already extracted. And so the goal is basically to copy the part one that zip file and go into Visual Studio Labs and the Labs folder and extract it into that folder. You see that for part zero, there is a hello world. There is some content into part zero. However, there is no content into part one yet. So we're going to paste part one here and just extract it here. It's going to ask you if you want to replace the different files. You say yes to all. And now we can basically delete the zip file. And we're going to see into part one that there is some content extracted. So now we want to update the Visual Studio project to take into account the new files we have extracted. So remember, only part zero is available at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to open a comment prompt and go into Labs Visual Studio Labs. And from here, we're going to rebuild the solution file and just execute build.bat hello. So sure, it's going to copy the hello world underscore lab that exe into the target VM. But most importantly, it's going to update the solution file. If we go back to Visual Studio, we see that actually the solution file has been modified, which is exactly what we wanted. So we can reload it. And now we see that part one has been added and we have access to the three labs in the KTM basics, create resource manager, commit single enlistment transaction and commit multi enlistment transaction. So now let's move to the goals of the different Visual Studio lab that we're going to do right now. And I'm going to explain that with some demo. So the goal here is going to be to familiarize yourself with actually building the projects and labs from Visual Studio directly. So for instance, here we see that we only have the hello world that we already built that we can execute from the desktop. But however, if we delete it and we go here and we just rebuild the Hello World project, we can see that it's going to be copied onto the target VM again. So the goal of these labs are going to be to familiarize yourself with the KTM APIs. We see that it imports the KTM headers and to practice Kidra, Winbag, RedSync to understand KTM. Each lab has a section with a lab to do section where you need to add certain code and feel free to use the cheat sheet from both Kidra and Winbag. They give you information on some commands that are handy to type in order to understand better what KTM is. 
So now let's move on to the Create Resource Manager lab. So this is the first lab regarding KTM internals. It's quite simple one, but it's going to get you started. The idea is basically to create a resource manager. The binary will be pushed directly to the target VM and you need to compile it, add code to create a volatile resource manager and then break on a certain syscall, which is NT Create Resource Manager ext in WinBag and then analyze the different kernel objects like K-Resource Manager and KTM, respectively related to the Resource Manager and the Transaction Manager. So all the labs have the same skeleton, so it's good to know how we created them. So the first thing is to build the project and modify to make sure it builds. You can see it's going to copy the file onto the target VM. So when you run the generated binary from the target VM, it is going to give you the instructions of the lab. You can see here the goal is to add code to create a volatile resource manager and then break in the debugger on the actual NT create resource manager X syscall. And finally, you'll be able to analyze the structures in the kernel related to the resource manager and the transaction manager. So you get familiar with what objects are created into the kernel. So one quick thing about the fact that actually here it's waiting that we hit a key. You'll notice that if we try to rebuild it, it's going to actually fail. And so if you see this kind of thing where it fails to build it, just make sure it's not related to the actual binary being executed already and waiting for a key to be hit. Here, if we actually unblock it and we try to rebuild it, it's going to work. Okay, so let's look at the actual source code. So we can see it's the Create Resource Manager lab and we see it actually links to KTM libraries. It also imports some KTM header files. We see that we've defined a handle for a transaction manager and a resource manager to default values that are undefined. Then there is a default GUID for resource manager that we've defined. And then we see it starts printing the instruction of the lab that we saw earlier when executing the binary. We see it creates a transaction manager, which is volatile and saves it into the handle for the transaction manager. It prints that the transaction manager has been created. Then it recovers the transaction manager and prints that it has been recovered. Then it prints that you need to hit a key to create the, the resource manager. And then there is the get character function being called. And this blocks the actual binary before you, you need to continue and you need to enter a key to be able to continue. Here there is the actual instructions that you need to add some code to actually uh, solve the challenge. Then it's checking a, a handle to resource manager. So probably this code will actually initialize the resource manager handle. And it shows the fact that the resource manager has been created. Finally, it called the a function to recover the resource manager and it prints that information. And finally, it's gonna block again just before leaving, just so you can, because when you exit the binary, everything related to what you've initialized will be freed. So this is to avoid things to be freed until you actually want them to be freed. So let's just build it unmodified and rerun it. So we're going to execute the create resource manager lab. We see it prints the instructions. It prints the two information about the transaction manager being created and recovered, and then it blocks. So we've noticed it actually blocks just before doing anything with the create resource manager function that we haven't written yet. And if we hit enter, it's actually going to exit because the resource manager hasn't been created correctly. So we know we need to add a function called create resource manager. So if we look that up on the actual internet we're going to see that this function is defined and we need to check the different arguments how we can actually create a volatile resource manager we see that the first argument can be null the second one needs to be a valid grid which is not null then we can use the third argument to, to define that it's a volatile resource manager then we need to pass the handle to the transaction manager and finally a description for the resource manager which is optional, so probably can be null as well. 
So the last thing we're gonna need for this lab is to have Ghidra and Windbag started. So let's start Ghidra. We're gonna work with the tm underscore vellum that sits in the basic bindy thing, which is the one we have modified so far. And we're gonna also load the NTOS kernel that has been modified for us, both in the same code border. Then we need to use a winbag. So we're gonna use the network approach, connect to the target VM. If you look at the actual bat script to start winbag, you can see that we have commented out the other methods and the one we use is the one to execute the dbg prep.cmd file that when bag is started. If we look at the actual file, we can see it's starting red sync. It's, it's, it's trying to sync with Ghidra and then it reloads the tm.sys module. We, for now, we commented out the patch command that we're going to use later. And basically that's all we do. Then we continue execution. So let's start with bag. We can see it's actually connected to the target. However, for now, it hasn't done anything. So if you want to do something, you can break. When you break, you're going to see that actually it's going to execute the dbg prep.cmd. Here, it loaded RedSync. However, it failed to synchronize with Ghidra. If we go in Ghidra, we can check that the RedSync plugin module is idle. So we have, haven't started this module yet. So if we go in the cheat sheet Kidra dot markdown, we can see that to enable RedSync, we need to use Alt S. So we go back into Kidra and use Alt S to start the RedSync plugin. Now we can see it's actually listening. And if we use the bang sync command in WinBag, we can see that it's synchronized with Kidra. So if we just want to confirm that all the debugging environment works with Ghidra, WinBag, and running our binary, we see that we need to add a call to create resource manager, which we haven't done yet, but we can probably confirm it works with another call. So if we have the create transaction manager call, we can guess that the there should be a nt create transaction manager ext function probably. So let's break on that function in WinBag. So we're gonna add a breakpoint for that. We replace resource manager with transaction manager ext. And then we continue execution. Now, if we have pushed the, the binary already and we re-execute it, we see that it hangs. We can't do anything with the VM. It's because it hit the breakpoints. So here we see some backtrace. And in Ghidra, we see that actually it hit the function. So we have synchronized it and we're able to debug the actual function. We can see it's changing. Now it's time for you to do the job.